Good morning and welcome to another episode of Unscripted and Unchained RPG Review. I am Game Master Bloodworth and as you can see by the graphics, today's video I am going to be talking about a topic I, I don't believe I've spoken to uh, before and that is D&D's Adventures League. So um, recently as I was going through my, uh, you know, my various uh, web pages and such that I, uh, that I follow, I was on Facebook and I saw a post on uh, Facebook that really did catch my interest because uh, it, it involves uh, conventions and it involves uh, what, uh, what game spaces are going to be available uh, for scheduling and whatnot. And as someone who has been really trying to increase my, um, my footprint on the uh, on the convention scene uh, by going to as many conventions as I can and making it a point of for myself to run as many game sessions as I can uh, and with a variety of game systems as well. So I have been noticing over the last two years or so that I've been going to um, in-person conventions that I've seen a, a decline of Adventure League slots and an increase of some other game systems such as Castles and Crusades. I've seen uh, a, a literal explosion of, um, of Shadow Dark appearing, especially these last couple of months, uh, Shadow Dark appearing at game conventions and such. And then I came across a Facebook posting that um, there's an issue with Adventures League and that it might not be ready for a uh, early portion of 2025. Uh, and I'm going to get into that in the moment, but I just want to explain the, and I'll go to various websites to prove my uh, to prove the statement that I'm making here. It all comes down to when the new SRD is going to drop. And Adventures League is so tied into presenting at the tables a very uh, strict, a uniform rule set <clears throat> that there's just no way that it can uh, take place prior to the release of the new SRD. So let me uh, switch views here, and I'm going to go to uh, the first uh, the first article. So this is from N World Watsi 2024. D and D core rules will be added to the SRD in 2025 all right so srd 5.2 will be released under creative license uh creative commons next year now this is supposedly going to happen around february all right with the release of the um the final book the monsters manual all right uh so this really puts on hold conventions in scheduling and organizing Adventure League game sessions, all right? Because Adventure League has such a very strict interpretation of what rules can be used that um, it, it cannot be done prior to that. So I'm going to switch to a different article here and kind of go through what the previous year's conventions rules were uh, for Adventure League. So, And let me just double check to make sure that you're looking at the same thing. So here we have Adventures League unveils new dungeon craft document with Planescape in focus. All right, so the Planescape setting, and this is not really tied to Planescape at all, um, this is just going to the rules that I'm going to jump to for, uh, for running Adventures League adventures at 
conventions. So I'm going to skip over the, the Planescape portion, although when you see this here, Planescape as a setting while being part of the Forgotten Realms campaign, Dungeon Craft Adventures in Planescape must focus primarily on the Planescape setting. Adventures must start with the code PSDC. Allowed resources. Several resources, including Mort's Planner a Parade and Big B's Presents Glory of Giants, are approved for crafting adventures in Planescape. Adventure setting resources, uh, Planescape adventures in the multiverse, creators are advised not to contradict current information or destroy a plane and to consider the themes and philosophies of each plane. Tiers and rewards, creators can design adventures for any tier and select consumables from approved resources, rewards such as specific limitations to maintain balance. Creating your own adventures with Dungeon Craft. The Dungeon Craft program allows creators to design their own D&D Adventures League adventures. They can be tailored to various D&D campaigns, each with specific resource books, usable monsters, and magic item rewards. All Dungeon Craft adventures must align with the world of the featured campaign setting without crossing into other settings or worlds unless explicitly allowed by that campaign's rules. Creators must use sp a specific template provided for Dungeon Craft Adventures, including the Community Created D&D Adventures League logo, familiarity with the D&D Style Guide, and adherence to DM's Guild content guidelines are also required. Uh, adventure crafting should be designed for either a two-hour or four-hour playtime. The guide specifies how to handle monsters, including annotations for racial abilities and magic items, and prohibits changing the challenge rating of monsters, NPCs, or creating new creatures. The adventure must occur within the designated setting and should not result in a destination of major locations or NPCs. Treasures, the program outlines specific rules for selecting magic items, rewards, and other consumables based on adventures tier and duration. These include limits on the types and numbers of items that can be chosen from designated tables. There are clear guidelines for group monetary rewards based on the tier and duration of the adventure. All right, and, and so on and so forth. So you can see that there is, you know, quite a number of limitations and, and, and descriptions in there uh, that limit the creativity of the game master uh, looking to run these adventures. I mean, you're being told that, you know, you can create an adventure, yet these are the very strict guidelines that you must follow. And, and the thing that really gets me is that the fact that you cannot alter the, um, you cannot alter a creature description or, uh, you know, groupings of, of powers or whatever um, to essentially, you know, throw a curveball at the, you know, at the players who might be very well aware of the abilities and traits of a certain type of creature. And yet in your adventure, when they encounter it, it is slightly different and it really puts them into um, a, a mode where they have to respond differently than what they've already metagamed their knowledge from, you know? So it's, to me, it is a, um, I don't really know why anyone would want to run that, all right? Um, you know, it's certainly not my taste. So let's, let's put, you know, I'll put it in that context that, uh, in my opinion, I could never see myself limiting my creativity uh, or limiting myself in, in um, I can only use certain resources, you know, at the table, at my table, uh, to expose the players at my table to. It, it just, it's just weird to me. However, 
let's get to the um, let's get to the comment that I saw. So this was a poll I saw. All right, and it says a uh, poll. Watsi's Adventures League AL. There is a lack of clarity from Wizards of the Coast about the status of any rule or procedural changes to the recent D&D rules update will bring to the AL is making it difficult to plan for and schedule AL at, and I, I, left, the, um, I left the convention name out. Please let us know thought, uh, your thoughts by voting in the poll below. Thank you. So all AL events at are important to me. Only 16% of the respondents said they were important to them. And 84% said they don't care as, uh, you know, at all about the, uh, about the events. Uh, they don't even care if the events are offered at uh, this particular convention. And I'm assuming that we're going to see this kind of a dilemma going through um, some conventions that are looking to start up the new year um, are, are going to be hamstrung from being able to, you know, schedule these things. Because even though the SRD is supposed to come out in February, that's not a guarantee. Uh, and... You know, how are these conventions? Because there are several that I certainly attend in January, in April, in June, and then in September. Um, you know, the four conventions that I go to, even though really only two of them have uh, Adventures League really, you know, reflected in it. And the one it hasn't even started to schedule anything yet for the convention that is in April. Um, this is going to, this is going to prevent them from, uh, from scheduling such things. Now, why do, why do I care? I'm not an Adventure League person. I'm not even a 5e player and have never run the system. I've only played the system a few times. I was not a big fan of the system, even back when, it was at the height of its popularity. I just never liked the system. But what I do want to see is the growth of other game systems out there, especially in the convention space, uh, to start filling in these gaps that are being left behind, you know, opened uh, for other game systems to begin to flourish begin to get that exposure uh, to the traveling public as we walk through a convention space. You know, um, I personally, I like to walk past 20 tables and I'd like to see 15 different games run at 20 tables. You know, that's just, you know, that's possibly just me, but I think a lot of people really do want to see the spread of other game content out there, you know, especially in the convention space, so that we can try out new game systems or we can run new game systems and, and keep on bringing more and more fans to uh, the hobby as a whole. All right, and so... I don't have an issue and, and, and I'm actually almost welcoming for Adventures League to scale back a little bit, whether it happens naturally or uh, whether by design or whatnot. Um, and that will leave more room for other game systems to start filling in that space. Now, um, I do know one thing that... Uh, Castles and uh, Crusades, uh, Troll Lord Games, is looking to expand their uh, organized play at various conventions. And, and so I'm really, really happy to see that. I'm sure that we're probably not very far off from uh, 
Adventure League style play, all right, uh, which is that um, continuation of uh, of play uh, for the same characters in the in the you know in the continuum of several conventions where you're able to bring your character to another convention and you're in that same thing and and yeah I, I guess there's some kind of a desire that the rule system is not so dramatically different that you're going to catch somebody where they they just don't know how to function within the game system but that I don't think is going to ever happen I think that what you might do is you might come into a situation where um, a creature that you have meta knowledge of uh, might be slightly different than uh, what you've known. And all that's going to do is that's going to create a um, that's going to create a situation where you're you're kind of forced to think a little bit differently uh, and your character to have your character act a little bit differently and respond to a, a potentially new challenge that uh, they weren't quite expecting. So to me, it's actually a, uh, a better way to go about uh, doing such things. But um, hopefully they clarify this for those that are really concerned about it. But from, from what I have seen at several conventions now, and what I see in that poll, most people don't even care if it continues at the convention or not. Um, and, and so that's something that I think is really eye opening. And, you know, once again, it shows how, uh, Wizards of the Coast and Hasbro uh, are, are not exactly connected with the, uh, with the consumer base and the, and the player base in particular that, you know, this is, this is where they're going. And I'm not even getting into the issue of, well, if they're going to require at a convention space, and this was brought up in, in one of the comments to that, um, to that post, that poll, was that uh, just imagine what it's going to look like when everybody has to bring a laptop to a convention table and, and imagine what impact that's going to have on the bandwidth uh, you know, of the Wi-Fi service if uh, all of a sudden all of these... Uh, you know, all of these tables are trying to connect up to the the digital, you know, the digital form of D&D &D 2024. It's, it's, you know, in my opinion, you might as well not even be in the convention space to do that. You could have sat at home and done that and, and doing, uh, you know, at Move Adventures League to an online league uh, and leave the convention space for, um, you know, for in-person play. Uh, so that's another thing that I, I, I'm not really sure uh, Wizards of the Coast and uh, and Hasbro in particular uh, really don't, I don't think they care. I don't think that they care about um, conventions and, you know, in-person play and playing with physical copies of books and everything. That's just not in their, uh, that's not in their focus. Uh, they don't see the game going in that direction, uh, at least under their direction. They don't see it going that way. Uh, they don't want it to go that way. They want it to go fully digital. And this is showing you a the ripple effect, I believe, of that kind of decision-making process that they're using. Uh, and they're, they're not putting out important information as quickly as it can be done, uh, and it is hampering conventions from, you know, actually planning on, you know, what sessions that they can provide. So um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I'm sure that this will be a video that gets a lot of, uh, you know, uh, a couple thumbs down and some snipes back or whatever. But, uh, you know, it's just what I see. I see that, you know, this is an unfortunate thing that is going to impact conventions uh, and um, and it may lead to conventions having a hard time uh, working out their schedules. Uh, but I also see the silver lining in that is that it might also open up conventions 
to put more space towards um, other game systems, which would be great as well. So you all have a great day. Take care. Thanks for stopping in. If uh, you haven't liked and subscribed and uh, commented and shared and done all of those things, I'd really appreciate it if you would. And, uh, you know, that helps bring more people to the channel that I can then have conversations with and take suggestions from and whatnot. And just the, the interaction of it is really what I'm hoping for. So, um, you know, I absolutely love comments. I've always said that. And uh, even those that I disagree with or disagree with me, I have no problems with those as well. Uh, so you all have a great rest of your day. Uh, looking forward to the weekend. So enjoy your weekend. And uh, as always, I look forward to seeing you on a gaming screen or at a convention sometime soon. Take care.